All right, so we've got an app now that you can store notes and the notes are stored persistently in the database, okay, and retrieved fine. So we've got the note taking app. You know, you could take this app right now and if you wanted to kind of, you know, jot things down during your day, you could use this this note taking app. And and of course, you want to think about it in more general terms. You could enter any kind of information, you know, not just simple notes with an app like this and be able to store it persistently. So it's pretty pretty powerful stuff and very common functionality for, for apps. Okay, what I want to do now is kind of refactor. I want to make our code cleaner. And refactoring means to, you know, basically keep the app, as far as the user is concerned, it'll work the same, but you want to make your code simpler so if you do need to make changes or if there's bugs, it's easier easier to fix. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do that. And we're going to start, What the main thing I want to do is, you know, we've got kind of different code to display lists. You know, when someone enters a new item, and also when we bring the whole list in from the database, we need to display the list. And we're doing it in slightly different ways for the, for the two things. And, and one, you know, very important, you know, kind of computer science principle, programming principle is, Try not to have the same code in more than one place or similar code. Try to factor it out into what's called a procedure and then call that procedure from the two different places. So do not copy paste, but um, you know, just have one copy of, of each scene. So you know, when we add new items, what we were doing was we were just adding the new item to the end of the label each time. You know, I'm going to change it. First thing I'm going to do is just kind of borrow this code from uh, the screen initialize. And what we do here is we go through the whole list and display it. And we can do that also on the new item. So I'm going to copy and paste that guy. Notice that with the for each, my when I pasted it, the item name got changed. So I need to make sure I keep that matched up because this for loop has its own kind of placeholder which is called item one. So I gotta re stick these guys in. Okay. And so what I'm just doing right right now is I'm just copy and pasting this display list code and I'm gonna remove the old display list code from um, the submit button click and stick this one in. And you know what this for each does is goes through an entire list of data and sticks them in the label. Okay, and it's pretty much similar to this, but but slightly slightly different. Okay, and what we want to do that the problem is each time you enter it, you will have first the first item, then you would add the first and the second back to the first item. In fact, let you know let me run this and show you what'll happen. Um, so if I type in item one and submit it, there's item one. Now if I do item two, it's going to basically add item one and item two onto the end of item one. So if I show this whole display, notice I've got my new thing and then I've got the old stuff. Okay, because what this does is show an entire list, but we're not cleaning the label out before we do that. So I can, I can make this code work by simply, you know, erasing what's in the node list able text, putting empty text there. You know, so so essentially, each time a an item is added to the list, make the label empty, then go through and and just redo every item in the list again. And that way, we're using the same code here as we're using when we bring the list in from the first place. Um, so let me connect a device here to restart. I'm once again using live testing because we're not dealing with persistence really right now. Um, so what's, what's going to happen now is we add an item to our variable, we empty the label, we go through the whole list variable and stick each item back in. Okay. Um, and it's the same thing we do when we go get the whole list from the database. Same exact code. Just let me, I'll just run it to show you that, that it should work, work fine. 
So if I do item one, submit, and item two, and now it should be fine. And notice that item two shows up first, and we don't have the duplicate like we had before. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the blocks we were using before. Okay, and now I want you to notice here's some code for displaying a list, and here's essentially the same code, a different placeholder name. Okay, but in either case, we're looping through a whole list, and this placeholder variable is just kind of keeping track of the current one we're on as we loop through and re redo these blocks a number of times. Okay, so back to refactoring. Now I've got this very, in fact, exact similar code. And what you want to do instead of having a bunch of blocks copied and pasted is define a procedure. So move it all to one place and then call it from the two places. Okay, so I'm going to go to built in and I'm not going to define a variable, I'm going to define a procedure. Okay, and a procedure is essentially you know, a sequence of blocks with a name. So I'm going to call this procedure display list. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, I want this empty list stuff and then the processing the list. I'm going to take these guys out, I'm going to leave these guys, and I'm going to stick them in display list. Okay, so now I've got a display list which basically does exactly what I wanted to do before. Okay, I'm going to get rid of these blocks. Okay, well actually let me leave them there for now. Okay, to make things work as they were before, now I need to call this procedure. You know, basically those blocks were right here. Now I'm just going to call this procedure and that'll cause all these blocks to be done. So I go to my definitions. As soon as I create this procedure, there's now a call display list. I stick it in there. And, you know, notice my submit button looks simpler. And what it's doing is add a bunch of items, very high level display list. You know, it, at some points we can kind of even, you know, ignore what goes on in there. But, you know, if we want to, we can look and, and see, oh, oh, that's how you display a list. Okay. And then we go on and do other other stuff. So the nice thing is, though, we can now make this code simpler as well. So here is almost an exact copy of this. You know, we could have emptied the label first when we initialized, but it was already empty. But anyway, it won't hurt anything. So I'm going to take all these blocks out, dump them in the trash, and then once again go grab call display list and stick it right there. So now I call display list from two different places. When the user enters a new thing, and when we load the database data in from the from the TinyDB. In both cases, I go to my display procedure and stick all my notes into the label. Okay, I think things should still work. Um, if I put in item three here, submit, and voila, things are still working fine. And in fact, if I went and tested it, the app um, by you know downloading to device and testing the persistence, this display list would do exactly what I want. So you know what we've done is the app works exactly as it did before, but now it's cleaner, and we've got this name, this display list name, that I can call in different places. And in fact, you know what I'm going to add a remove um, to the app to be able to remove notes. And after I remove a note, I'm also going to have to re-display my list. And now I won't have to copy-paste a bunch of stuff. I can just call display list.